uh, and so a quick overview of, of building your code, um, a comment on, on data science software, which the machine has primarily been used for um, up until recently, and, and then the queuing and, and running jobs. And then we'll, we'll have a, a hands-on session the, with, with several examples um, to, to walk through. Um, and so again, uh, Theta GPUs are our, our newest system. It's an expansion to the Theta uh, machine. And, and this was originally acquired to the help support coronavirus resource, um, but we would now op open it up for, for general use. Um, th this is an NVIDIA DGX A100 uh, partition. Uh, it's a 24 node um, addition to Theta. Uh, each of these nodes has eight NVIDIA A100 Tensor Core GPUs, uh, two AMD Rome 64 core CPUs, uh, 15 terabytes uh, of, of total SSD storage space attached, um, as well as uh, 200 gigabit per second NICs uh, for uh, eight of them for the compute network and two for storage. And so uh, a very versatile machine for, for uh, you know, simulation data and learning workflows. And all of these nodes are connected in a fat tree topology and is mounted um, on Theta's uh, current uh, 10 petabyte luster file system. Uh, as, as well as uh, the Grand and Eagle file systems that we'll learn about later in, in this workshop. Um, to, to log into Theta GPU, uh, again, we, we have a central set of login nodes, the, the Theta login nodes that, that you would log into. And so you, you would log into these nodes, whether you were doing work on the KNL partition or, or the GPU partition. Um, the, I think the, the, the most straightforward way to, to uh, submit jobs to, to Theta GPU would be to first load uh, the Cobalt a GPU instance for the scheduler, module load, Cobalt, Cobalt GPU. And then from there, all of your Cobalt commands will interact with the GPU partition. And so QStat will show you what jobs are running on the GPU partitions. QSub will, will submit the job to the GPU partition. Um, and, and, and currently, the what we would recommend is that you do all of your building and development on the compute nodes. And, and so I think the workflow of, of logging into Theta uh, switching the scheduler over to the GPU partition and then submitting an interactive job to do your builds would, would, is, is, is a good workflow to get started with. Um, and of course, if, if you, you're you back on the Theta login nodes and you want to switch back to the KNL partition, we, we have a, a Cobalt uh, for the KNL as well that you can switch back and forth with. Um, again, uh, the modules for completeness, uh, again, all of the module commands are shown here, um, similar to what was shown pre previously. Uh, on Theta GPU, uh, again, it, it was primarily for used for coronavirus research. And a lot of that work was the data and learning variety. And, and so software such as PyTorch and TensorFlow is installed and ready to go for, for your projects. Um, as we've opened it up for more general use, we, we are growing the, the software that we have installed on the system. Uh, one recent addition is the, the NVHPC, um, the NVIDIA's HPC SDK set of compilers and, and CUDA and, and the tools and, and so on. Um, we're also installing uh, versions of OpenMPI uh, to be consistent with the, the PGI compilers. And so the, the software environment is evolving. And, and if, if, if you find that, that you're missing something that you need to install your particular application, that, that would be a good question to raise in the Slack channel. And, and we'll, we'll try to help you as best we can. Um, or if you're having trouble finding something, you know, those are all good questions to ask in Slack. You know, I wouldn't waste too much of your personal time trying to find the answers to those. Um, uh, the default software environment, uh, we have the GNU compilers. And so this, would be this is primarily for C and C++ codes. And so, uh, as, a, as a way to just quickly get up and running, if, if you have a, a CUDA or OpenCL code, th these compilers should be more than fine to, to initially do some testing. Uh, we, we don't have uh, G-Fortran installed uh, for the GNU compilers, and so Fortran codes will have to use the next set of compilers, um, the NVIDIA compilers. Uh, here, the, these, these compilers are available, uh, loading an appropriate module. And so for, uh, as, as you can see, the swapping out um, the, this OpenMP module, and, and again, we'll go through this in the hands-on examples. Uh, we'll load in uh, both uh, an OpenMP open MPI, MPI that's consistent with the MVH um, PC compilers. And so you'll get both the compilers and an uh, ALCF provided OpenMPI that you can use to build C, C++, Fortran codes. And, and you could use these program, the, these compilers for, for CUDA, OpenCL, OpenACC, OpenMP um, programming models. Uh, we, we have several uh, varieties of, of the NVHPC modules. And so uh, a, a 
their NVHPC will add all components uh, to your paths. And, and so this is the compilers, libraries, and tools. Uh, the NVHPC bring your own compiler is identical to the NVHPC modules, but it doesn't set the compiler environment variables. Uh, I think the one that will be most useful though is the, the no MPI um, variant for, for these modules. And so this is what will load the, the soft, the compilers and the tools into your environment, but will leave the open MPI module um, to, to use one that's, that's provided by the ALCF. Um, th this will be important not only for single node runs, but for multi-node runs. Um, and, and again, we'll, we'll go through some of this with the hands-on if, if there are any particular questions. Um, we, we also have a, the, a set of the LLVM compilers, and I, I believe these will be used during the OpenMP um, hands-on session. And so those, those can be loaded with the, the LLVM module, and, and you could use these compilers with CUDA, OpenCL, or OpenMP codes. On the data science side, we, we have a, 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 a growing documentation there. It, it, it's quite robust as it is now. And so if, if you are interested in building Python packages, uh, any work with singularity containers, uh, there, there are examples for doing distributed training with data parallelism. If, if you're interested in running PyTorch or TensorFlow, uh, there, there's lots of good documentation for, for those topics on the website. Uh, I'll also call out a, a, a large amount of, of discussion and documentation and examples uh, that from our recent uh, simulation data and learning workshop. And I have the link for the website as well as a, a GitHub page for that as well, if, if you're interested in that. But again, well, a lot of these topics will be covered uh, during this week at week's workshop. Uh, a couple of Q sub attributes that might be particularly interest for, for the theta GPU partition. Uh, one is uh, MIG mode. And this will be a topic near the end of the workshop of how to make use of the multi-instance GPU capability of on these GPUs. Um, for, for many workloads, you, you may need an outbound connectivity from the compute nodes, maybe to, to grab a, a data set or to, to open up a GUI to visualize results. And so the, the PubNet is, is a good attributes flag to, to keep in mind. Uh, submitting jobs on Theta GPU. Uh, once you used QSub to, to launch a job script, inside your job script, you would use MPI run. And so MPI run will launch applications on the compute nodes. Uh, it'll be important, especially for multi-node runs to, to make use of the host file argument and pass in the Cobalt node file environment variable. Uh, lowercase n to specify the total number of MPI ranks, and then uppercase n to specify the number of MPI ranks per node. Um, and the, the example here shows that within your script, you can also specify your Cobalt scheduler, um, scheduler environment uh, arguments. And, and, and those should remain um, on consecutive lines without any empty lines for, for the Cobalt to, to capture everything. Um, uh, some important additional important MPI run arguments. Uh, dash X is, is what's used to, to pass environment variables. Um, dash dash bind to uh, would be helpful if, if you want to um, be if you want to specify explicitly your, your affinity of, of MPI processes to the cores. Um, the open and OMP num threads maybe another one if, if you have open MP threads on the cores. Um, a lot of the information and folks, folks may be familiar with MPI run. And so the, the, there is also the man page for additional documentation if you have questions. Um, one question that, that's come up is, is how to, to map GPUs um, to your MPI ranks. Uh, in many cases, this is something that, that's handled through the, the programming model or framework semantics, uh, you know, CUDA and, and TensorFlow. Uh, they both have APIs for, for uh, assigning the GPU devices to the ranks. Um, and so you, you, you may already have examples in, in your codes. Uh, there, there are also environment variables. And so CUDA visible devices is, is one environment variable that could be used to, to help uh, assign uh, processes to the GPUs. On Theta GPU, we, we have uh, a relatively straightforward queuing system. The, the, there are two queues um, in addition to the, the training queues that we have for this workshop. With a simple first in first out policy, uh, we have the, the full node queue, which would give you all the GPUs on a node. Uh, we, we also have um, outside of this workshop, a, a single GPU core. Uh, and so that, that one may be helpful if you just wanna do uh, a quick testing, debugging, building of codes, uh, um, profiling, or I'm sorry, not profiling, but a quick tests on, on an individual GPU and, and you don't need the full resources of a node. Um, 
for it and the, the Q policies are available uh, both in this table and, and on the website that, that's shown at the link. Um, and, and it's always a good thing that, to check the policy um, uh, to, in case any changes that come up, but we would communicate those in, in the weekly updates. Um, one thing that, that might be of interest uh, for folks who are already coming with codes is, is profiling. And so uh, through uh, the NVIDIA tools, you, you have access to the in, insight systems and insight compute that folks may already be familiar with. And so here are a couple of examples of, of using both of those tools on the compute nodes, uh, generating output uh, text-based. Uh, there's also the, op the option to, to viewing the results via the GUIs. And so while I, I, I would personally recommend uh, downloading the desktop tar targets to, to view the results locally on your machine, it, it is possible to view um, the results through the GUI on the compute nodes. Um, I, I would encourage downloading to a local machine and then viewing them there. And, and the link there shows as the, the where you can download those at. Um, so a, a very quick overview, uh, getting started on Theta GPU. And again, these slides are available in Slack uh, and, and, and a lot, all of the documentation is on the website if there are any questions. Um, and so folks, if, if you grab the copy of these slides, you'll see it at the very end um, are, are several hands-on examples. Um, and so here is uh, a collection of, of examples that are already available um, there's a getting started repo with very simple lightweight examples just to test compiling codes and, and submitting jobs for, for different programming models. The, the SDL workshop examples that I, I pointed out previously. Um, and, and again, the, the repo specifically for this workshop where, where folks working on the hands-on session will, will probably will likely point you to. Um, I, an important thing to remember for, for making use of the resources during the workshop is, is to make use of the comp perf workshop allocation and to submit your jobs to the training queues. And so if you find yourself waiting a, a substantial amount of time before your job starts, th those would be the parameters that I check to make sure that you, you're submitting your job to the right queue. Um, and so I, I did uh, copy a, a small number of examples you know, into a separate directory, a separate, an examples directory. And that's what the, the bottom three commands are showing is that there, there's a slash projects slash comp perf workshop examples with a, a very small number of examples that I pulled from the repo. So a very lightweight um, process to, to get started if anyone was interested. Um, so in that directory is our examples for Cooley. If, if maybe you wanted to set up some analysis to codes or visualization codes on Cooley and submitting and testing jobs there, um, there's the Theta OpenMP examples. And, and this one's looking at how to set affinity for your OpenMP threads uh, via the app run command. There's also a Python example that some may be interested in. Um, on the Theta GPU side, there's a simple, um, again, the affinity example, the same one to, for anyone who wants to look at how the, you know, the affinity of MPI processes and OpenMP threads across nodes. Um, and the example output is available. Um, to show that you know, the first 16 ranks are on the first node, the second 60 ranks are on the next node. And in this case, uh, the thread, the processes were bound to cores. Um, and there's also a, a CUDA example uh, for building on Theta GPU. Uh, this one is a, a C, C++ example. And then there's also a Fortran example as well. Um, and so hopefully 